Look at these mysterious holes. What could have happened here? What is this? It looks like the leaf of a plant, but why is it full of holes? This video shows a lot of plants in the greenhouse, and many of them also have the same types of holes in. Whatever caused them must be very determined. What do you think could have made those holes? It could have been an insect or a disease. But it turns out there's a strange animal on the loose collecting small circles out of the leaves. It's a scientist. The process of collecting these leaf discs requires highly scientific equipment, a hole punch and some tweezers. There are hundreds and hundreds of these plants in the greenhouse. Does anyone know what type of plant this is? It's a maize plant, which is the plant that produces corn. We had to collect lots of circular discs out of our maize leaves, so we needed many different scientists to take circles out of the leaves working late into the evening. Even with our team of six scientists, it took two weeks to collect all the discs we wanted. We eventually harvested about 20,000 leaf discs. Each disc like this had to be carefully collected for our research. Why did we need to collect our samples as tiny discs? Transporting these discs back to the lab is a lot easier than bringing 800 whole plants. Each of these plants is a different type of maize, grown from a huge variety of different seeds. We grew them in a luxury air-conditioned greenhouse so that they would receive lots of light to help them grow quickly and so that they would have enough warmth without becoming overheated. This allowed us to grow healthy plants that were ready for sampling as soon as possible. But what did we want these leaf discs for anyway? Well, once we had collected the leaf discs, we gave them an unusual treatment. We exposed them to a stressful situation, high light and cold temperatures. When plants are stressed, this means they're in conditions that aren't good for them. This can affect the way they grow and they can end up looking very unhealthy. When we had finished exposing the plants to the stressful situation, we then put the discs into tubes for storage and to enable measurements to see how the stressful treatment affected the leaf discs. Here you can see about 100 leaf discs. Why are they arranged like this? When we have so many discs to measure in our experiment, we need to keep them organized. Keeping a standard layout like this means we know which sample is where and makes sure that each experiment is as similar to the others as possible. Once organized in these plastic boxes, we sat the leaf discs on cold plates underneath bright lights. We also took a break for this photo shoot because it was so pretty to look at, but can't have been fun for the leaf discs. It would be like sunbathing on an iceberg. When might a plant experience these conditions in nature? These conditions replicate the most challenging conditions that a maize plant might encounter during a UK winter. Because we had taken so many leaf discs, there was no way we could measure them all in one day. So after exposing them to the stressful treatment, we needed to store them in the freezer to measure later. Kind of like putting your leftovers into the freezer to eat later. We use liquid nitrogen to freeze our samples. The liquid nitrogen is really cold, much colder than your freezer at home. The liquid nitrogen freezes the samples really quickly so that they are as fresh as possible when we take them out of the freezer later. It also looks really cool. This is a video of the time we froze some grass with our spare liquid nitrogen. And here's a box of frozen samples ready for storage. After we've exposed the discs to the stressful situation and stored them safely, it's time for us to defrost our samples and make some measurements. We took lots of measurements to properly understand every way that the plants had responded to the stressful treatment. For some measurements, we need to take liquid out of the plants to understand what is happening inside each leaf. We'll show you a couple of examples. In this experiment, chlorophyll has been extracted from the leaf discs, giving us a pretty green color. Chlorophyll is a special molecule inside the leaf that helps it to carry out photosynthesis. 
the process that plants use to make food. The darker the green, the more chlorophyll there is in the leaf. The amount of chlorophyll in the leaf tells us how healthy or unhealthy the plants are, which shows how well they dealt with the stressful conditions. Here's a scientist measuring some of the samples in a different way. Why isn't this sample green? When we add different liquids to the leaf discs, different things are extracted from the leaves. This experiment measures how damaged the cell membranes are. We put the leaf sample into some water and measure how much stuff from inside the cells has leaked out into the water using this little white and pink machine. Does water extract chlorophyll? No, if it did, these samples would be green too. Why do you think we've been doing this? Why do we care if plants are stressed? We are measuring stress because stressed plants don't produce as much food. In this photo, you can see a healthy plant on the left and an unhealthy, stressed plant on the right. In cooler countries like the UK, plants like maize that come from hot countries can be stressed out by cold conditions, especially in high light. We want to understand which maize plants are best able to withstand cold temperatures so we can help plant breeders and farmers produce better corn in colder climates. This is especially important with a growing global population because maize is the most produced crop in the world. It is used to feed people as well as to feed animals and produce biofuel. We'll leave you with a fun fact about maize. There are different types of photosynthesis, which is the process plants use to make food for themselves and for us. Most plants use normal photosynthesis called C3 whereas maize plants carry out a special kind of photosynthesis called C4. This special photosynthesis is particularly efficient in certain environments. This means that maize plants can convert even more sunlight into food for us to eat compared to other crops such as wheat or rice.